Go ahead, Good afternoon, guys. <coughs> After empty lunch, is your style. Yeah. Good afternoon. Hope you all are enjoying this day, and it's great to be here on presenting Asia Application Insights and Jupyter Notebook to analyze large scale data. Apparently, thanks everyone for joining this session. It's been a great pleasure again. This session will help you to help you and your team to identify the issues before your customer going to post some issue on Twitter or Facebook, any kind of information. So, we will basically analyze what are the application insights or features available on Azure, such as Visual Studio Tooling, Intelligent Monitoring and Advanced Analytics and DevOps integrations that you can take from here and implement in your product pipeline so that you get benefits uh, to produce a error-free application. So once you take this uh, uh, session insights and apply in your product, uh, the developers are going to be delighted and the uh, end, end customers are going to come with more uh, more features and ask for like more productive team without firefighting for issues again and again. So you don't believe me? Let's dive into the session and see what are the uh, features that App Insights provides. Before I dive into the session, let me introduce myself. I am Sajidharan Sinadurai, working as a senior tech lead at 99X Technology. I have been working in the industry for the past eight years. Uh, I am working in open source stack and then Microsoft stack. I'm also a Visual Studio MVP uh, and, and also a top contributor from Sri Lanka on Stack Overflow. And also an open source contributor, I keep contributing to Angular, Angular and then charting libraries available on GitHub. You can go to the link and find those information. And I'm also an Angular enthusiast, so I try to help the Angular community and help on building some libraries that they can use for their application. Okay, uh, here is a small story. Like, see those two images. First one is a static, static image, and the second one is uh, like moving GIF. How many of you agree with the first image? I don't always test my code, but when I do, I do it in production. How many of you do this? No one? Then you are not a professional developer. If you are a professional developer, you should do that. And I have done it once and I still regret it for doing that. And when I do that mistake, this is what happens. You are going to, your application is going to like uh, break completely. So if you see modern applications, you need someone to manage your application 24-7 and you need to take care of the application continuously. So what comes in place is logging. You have to find what information are transferred across your application. Like if you take the modern day application, you have uh, so many uh, integrations done, right? You have authorization, authentication and then messaging, messaging confidence and you have so many integrations done. So you need one uh, side of uh, a common component to analyze all these data comes into one place and process them. Like whenever your site is down, everybody is going to push you and uh, keep the fixed issue in soon time. Like they are not going to wait for one hour or four hours or more, much more time. Uh, let me share a story. Back in 2012, I was working for a German client. It's like uh, we have deployed the application in production. And uh, after two months of successful running, uh, one fine day, a customer came with an issue saying that uh, whenever he drinks a cup of uh, Coke, uh, he, his application crashes and so that he, can, uh, he cannot continue entering information and the application reloads. So uh, we, as a team, uh, gathered together and the QA team was working like two days late nights and even they tried to drink Coke and reproduce the error, but they couldn't. Uh, anybody guess the reason? <coughs> yeah. 
Okay. I have a couple of stickers uh, from Asia Cosmos DB and Asia Function. So I will be asking questions from this session. If you answer, I will be giving away the stickers. Yeah. And apart from that, one question uh, related to the session so that they will give some uh, free gifts as well. So the answer for that question was, uh, we are great developers, right? So we gathered together and tried to find the analysis. Like we contact the customer and we made a call asking uh, where he get the one developer asked the question where he get the cock from. He said he uh, stays at the fifth floor and he goes to the eleventh floor and get a uh, cup of coke. Then he found that one of the developer found out that that's the reason actually. Like we have implemented a, a solution or a stored procedure that checks for the user active login time and it will clear the login time so the application crashes immediately. Apparently, no QA team has tested this and it has gone to production. And we spend like one week to fix this issue and get into production again. These are the kind of common issues that you get in any production environment and your customers are going to be pissed off hearing. So let's see how we can solve this issue. As I told earlier, logging becomes an important component in if you take any kind of application. Uh, these are the reasons why we would go for logging. First one is the troubleshooting. If you are a developer and if you want to see what are the things going inside the applications, once you log in and you navigate to different components and then when you log out, uh, what are the database calls and what are the errors that application goes through. And the second one is the performance of the course. Uh, this becomes an important factor because the clients always focus on cost and the performance of the application. You can uh, through the logging, you can always analyze the performance or the cost that is going to take for the application. And you can analyze the trends. If you take eBay, which is from one of the consumer of Asia, uh, so they are using a pattern analysis to identify the customer that they visit uh, their site frequently and they are pro providing machine language learning algorithms to uh, like show their co uh, products that user frequently visits and gets. And then it improves the customer experience. As I told earlier, you can analyze what are the components you are navigating, the customer is navigating through. So you can identify which feature is the most frequently used one by the customer. So all these ones comes as a final uh, advantage that when you're using application insight for the logging. Uh, business decisions. Yes, that is one of the important factors. If you want to have an increase in sales, you're going to use uh, logging. Yes. So I have told about uh, logging. So one of the core uh, part of this session is the application insight. We are going to use application insights as a logging component for your application deployed on Azure. And we will see how we can leverage the features of application insight to analyze all these uh, need for the logging as I mentioned earlier. So you are going to collect as the definition says, application insights is an extensible performance management service provided by Asia for web application like developers like us on multiple platforms. It could be your mobile or it could be a browser, different type of browsers as well. So it is going to collect telemetries coming from uh, different levels and your, as I mentioned, uh, the, where the application user is logging in and until he logs off. And the telemetry is going to be stored at one place, so it's very easy to analyze what are the logs the user has gone through, or what are the errors and traces have gone through. And get a 360 degree view of your application, including uh, usability, performance, and the, the trends, the patterns going. Let me move to this slide. Yeah. Uh, so, usually these days, I get, uh, I mean, when I was working earlier, I used to get a PDF of 80 pages from a customer saying that he needs to do an audit review and he wants to get the logs that the system pro uh, produces, like who are the customers visit from different locations and he needs to see the log. So what I do is, uh, those days we write to a log file, right? That's a common practice and we take the log file and give it to the customer. So once the customer gets that and he's finding it difficult to go through or he never goes through that and to identify what are the uh, customers pattern so it is never used again in the earlier days so application insights replace that and i'm going to explain how it's going to work in cloud or in local 
One of the advantages that you have with application inside, apart from other Asia services, is that even if you have it in, even if you have your uh, product in local or on prem, you can still analyze the logs that it goes through uh, through the cloud. You can you need to have an instrument key and use that in your application, and you can see the logs generated through Visual Studio. So if you see the diagram, it's how it look. Uh, so you have the web pages of the client applications, and you have your web service intermediate, and you have the dependencies as well. It could be SQL or different components that you have integrations. It could be external services or background background services such as storage services. So your web services, all these services are going to talk to the application insights and going to write the logs or traces or exception, and this can be exported to alerts. Export you can configure alerts like. Uh, if the customer, if there are thousand requests per day or what per day, like per hour, you need to get an alert to uh, your mobile phone. You can get that, and you can integrate this application insights logs to the Power BI, so you can create uh, so many visualization and produce it to the end user. And one of the coolest feature with Visual Studio is that you can directly integrate in local app insights and see what are the uh, logs generated. And you also can do with REST APIs, such as um, you can export to Jupyter Notebook, which I will be explaining later. And then you can do a continuous export because application insights stores your data for only for nine days, ninety days. Sorry. Uh, so it keeps the data only for three months. After that, they will be clearing all the data. So you have to do continuous export every three, three months, and you can keep it in local store. Uh, sorry, any kind of storage, and you can analyze the data. So that's how the architecture works. Uh, let's see what are the sources of telemetry. Uh, as I told you earlier, there are different sources of uh, coming the data coming from. Uh, it could be your uh, browser, or it could be the database that we are inter integrated, or it could be the users that they are uh, using. So the first one is the outsource in monitoring outside. So if I access a website from here, uh, it, it is hosted in US, and if someone access from US it is also there. So you can analyze the users who are coming from different areas and you can see the pattern uh, how many users are coming from this particular location, uh, which usually you do it in uh, Google as well. But it has a bit of advantage which you can, uh, the insights can be grouped together. And you can uh, analyze the user behavior and developer traits and events. Events become one of the important factors for developers. You can always generate events and uh, find the dependency. Uh, you can always correlate and find the dependency between if you are using a SQL database or in your application. As I mentioned earlier, the user behavior and then infrastructure performance. Uh, apart from the application management, you can always check for the infrastructure performance. Like if it's hosted in VM, uh, you can go through uh, the CPU usage and how many resources it has taken so that you can scale out your application uh, dynamically. So these are the sources and key capabilities. Let's see. Uh, it can be easily integrated with any of the technologies available out there. It could be Microsoft Stack or uh, open source stack. It could be JavaScript or any languages. And they have provided uh, uh, open source SDK, which you can go and contribute as well, which is uh, available on GitHub. And you can uh, download a piece of code, simply integrate in your application. Uh, there are separate available logging framework if you are working with .NET applications such as logging for and the log for net which you can easily uh, integrate with your application because it provides common uh, methods that you can uh, call directly and improve. So if we talk about key capabilities, uh, I will quickly run through these slides because we have limited time. Uh, so you get the 360 view of the availability, performance, and the usage. Uh, you can check the overall health of your application and quickly correlate the uh, performance between the database and your usage data. Uh, you can always uh, check the insights by clicking and going drill down uh, through each of these insights. And fast and powerful diagnostics is for <coughs> developers' uh, usage insight. Like you can always uh, check the availability and performance issues in your application and learn and improve continuously with these insights. 
uh, explores your data for, for further analysis. Yet yeah. you can, as a, as I mentioned earlier, you can export to different uh, uh, Power BI or any kind of uh, business insights platform, and you can visualize the data. And the final one is the built-in analysis for any app. So you do the continuous exporting and analysis to data, and which needs zero deployment or zero click. Uh, yes. If you see the overview blades, I will go through this uh, in like in the session when we do that. But I will explain what we are going to do it here. It will show the overview in one blade, and you can analyze. Uh, what are the application health availability performance and usage there and you have set of metrics showed there you can always check as i mentioned earlier you can click the, each of these uh, exception that that is populated and you can see the exact line which is causing that issue so that it will be always easy for the developers to identify there are certain tools provided by app insights such as Metric Explorer, which is going to display all that in uh, numeric analysis and uh, graph format. You can always create a graph with your own dynamic parameters and uh, produce it to other developers or the product management team as well. And it provides diagnostic search, which enables efficient search for large data. Uh, you can do that through the query experience it provides. So you have the powerful insights as well. So identify and try availability issues. You can always check the issues to uh, get in your application. And the mobile crash or any survey exception that you get, you can always check from the insights. So I will be doing through in the session. Like uh, one of the important things that I'm going to talk, I want to tell you guys is the telemetry. Uh, by default, you don't get the customer data or like. You want to see the exception that is causing that particular issue, then you have to write the custom data in your application inside. Assume if I am a user and then I try to log into a uh, like application and I'm going to create orders. Uh, somewhere it's causing an exception, and I don't know uh, as a developer where it's happening. So you need to write uh, where the application is accessed from and who is the user, what is the current context. So all this can be done through the telemetry. That's a client you can create, and you can pass the related information through the telemetry client, and so that you can easily get those insights whenever you need it. Okay, I have talked about application insights and features. Uh, what is Jupyter Notebook? Anyone heard of this? Yeah. So how many of you are developers here? Well, I think all of you are developers. <laughs> How many of you work in operations team? Okay, no one. Uh, actually, this session is useful for operations management and especially for developers. So I will go through one of the open source components available out there, which is called the Jupyter Notebook. Uh, it is kind of a uh, web application to create and share documents. Uh, you can have your own code presentations or equations equations and visualization that you can generate from different data sources and share it with your friends for the management team. Uh, another advantage that you have with uh, Jupyter Notebook is the language of your own choice. Uh, so you can write code with Python, Scala, or Java, or any kind of open source languages. There are around 40 languages supports uh, Jupyter Notebook. It supports big data integration, like uh, when you talk about large scale data, uh, Apache Spark becomes an important role, so you can always integrate Jupyter Notebook with Apache Spark and analyze your data. So here comes the Asian Notebook. Um, the Asian Notebook is uh, built on top of the Jupyter Notebook, which has similar con uh, kind of uh, user interface. Basically, it has two components. One is the user client, or you call the dashboard, and it has kernels for each of the uh, Python code that you run. So I'm going to demonstrate with Python, but you can run R or Jupyter R or Scala or any kind of language. So it provides a, like a sticky note. You can write code and if, if it anywhere you want, you can see and execute it whenever you want. So it executes in unit of cells and uh, it's great for sharing 
and exporting as well. It supports a variety of data types. Uh, it could be from different data sources. And it provides great visualization. Uh, you can analyze with custom visualization. There are a lot of different data science visualization. You can integrate those plugins and you can always visualize, which becomes handy for developers or the end customers to see their data in their uh, custom visualization. All right, let's code. Uh, so I have divided this uh, session or the code uh, like demo session into three parts. First, we will see uh, how to integrate application insights in an ASP.NET Core application and uh, how you can uh, generate the telemetry in local as well as in production. So I have two applications. So I will create an uh, application in local and uh, show you a uh, application running in production. Uh, like how a typical production application will look like. And then we'll dive into Asian Notebook with some of the data analysis. Of how many of you are cricket fan here? Okay. Do you watch IPL? So I have uh, got an IPL data set for the, since uh, 2008 to uh, 2017, until last year. So we will analyze that data set and see some beautiful insights. And the third one is the app insights with Azure Notebook. And that's the core part of this session, how you can integrate app insights with Jupyter Notebook and always generate visualization and produce to the end customer. Let me go back to the demo part. We'll come back to the slides later. So this is the session I have created. I have added the slides. You can always go and download. Also, I have attached the demos that I'm going to present it today. And uh, also, I have added the documentation for that. So it becomes easy for you to access this documentation and create your application on your own. Let me do the session uh, demo now. I'm going to create a .NET Core application using Visual Studio. So I have, I'm using Visual Studio 2017. Uh, I will take this back now. You can go home and read this if you are not uh, able to reproduce the application. So I have integrated the uh, step by step. You can always read through. Let me do the. Let me duplicate. I hope now you can see. So I'm going to create a .NET Core application. I will create it as ASP.NET Core Bootcamp. I'm going to create a web application which is MVC. So let me create. It's going to take a few minutes, few seconds. So I have created it, which you can see the scaffolder templates available. You can see the views, controllers, etc. So if you see the app settings, there is no key as of now. So let's see how we can integrate app insights. Let me right click and I don't see the app insights here. So you have to go to the NuGet package and download it. I will go to the manage NuGet package and let me quickly search for appinsights.asp.net So you see the NuGet package, I'm going to download it. All right. Now, if you go and see the app, app settings, I have to publish it. So I need to go and configure the application inside. So I click the application inside. I'm going to sign in with my Azure account. So
So it has already logged in. Let me register. It is going to register the app insights in your .NET Core application. Going to take a bit of time. Okay, finally, I can show the insights developed from the production application that I have. So we are a, we have wrote an application for a client in Netherlands, and this is how uh, I have taken some insights from that. So if you see. Uh, these are the insights generated from that uh, since last day. So there are no alerts configured for this uh, right now. There are no alerts generated, but I have configured an alerts to uh, gen give an alert whenever the request goes about 10,000. And you can see number of users who are accessing and see the requests that are coming to the website. Also, you can see a lot of uh, insights, the page, page views, load time, and the server requests. So if based on this analysis, I can always improve the application. If you are using a STA, uh, you can, based on the analysis, you can uh, minify the scripts and improve the loading time. Uh, it provides also analytics. Uh, here you can go to analytics and uh, you can visualize the data set in any kind of formulation by writing the query. So they have provided a set of queries. Since we are running out of time, I will show Few demos that is already existing. Uh, it is going to uh, produce the chart, pie chart, which is going to analyze the users coming from different locations and generate a chart. There are a set of other queries you can set, find what exception has failed in the last 24 hours. Zero efforts. I'm a happy developer now. And if you go to the, there are another insights you can always see the alerts. As I explained earlier, and then usage events, if there are any events configured. Let me go to one of the issues that we faced. Uh, if you go to failures, there have been no failures since last 24 hours, but earlier there have been failures. So if you go to this particular failure, uh, there's an error produced. When you click on that particular issue, it takes you to the this page, and you can still drill down and see the track. Stack phase. So there's a custom exception which we have locked on this particular line. Okay, it's a system exception. Probably we have not added the custom telemetry which I was explaining earlier. Okay. okay, now I have created the application and configured the application. Uh, Application inside. Let me publish to Asia. You can right click and publish. This is going to create a new app service profile. So it is going to create one using my account. It's loading the available subscription. So I have a Visual Studio subscription. I'm going to rent it as Asia Bootcamp uh, 2018. Okay. Let me create. It is going to do the deployment and which is going to take a bit of time. So why don't we take a selfie with you all guys? So during the time of deployment, let me take a selfie. Cool. Thanks for that. Still deploying. Okay, since it's taking time, I can go back to the insights that it generated. So you can always click on search and you can see the insights that it generated. Uh, so from this, you can see the number of requests that is coming to your website and number of errors produced and number of exceptions that you have in your application and number of uh, records that the application insights have right now. There are no dependencies errors as of now. Uh, but if you have any dependencies like SQL failing exceptions, you can always see it in your dependency. So, which is published, uh, which is created now, let me publish. So, parallelly, I will add some custom telemetry to this project. 
So you can go to this particular configure method. Uh, since I'm going to use one of the login locket package, so I'm going to add the locket package. Again, go to locket packages and I'm going to add the login. So we have one of the package Microsoft extensions login, which is going to you can use it for logging uh, in your application. So I have added it. Now you should be able to uh, import one of the uh, iLogger factory. So I'm going to integrate iLogger factory and create an instance of it and logger. Since it's missing the import, let me quickly add it. It's already added. So you can configure the app insights to your application using app card, use application insights. And you can pass app dot whatever the services that you are going to use. Since we are going out of time, let me show the final uh, solution that I have. So, we'll open one. You can always go to my GitHub page and download the solution. Hope you can do that. Uh, so, this is the final solution that I have. So I have added NDD -frame, NDD framework to uh, load the SQL database to write to the database. So I'm doing some of the uh, core operations using this method, and I'm logging the custom telemetry using this particular telemetry client, which is going to write the uh, what are the log information that I'm going to write. So you can always create using telemetry and add it. Uh, hope. You can show the uh, see the code going through this. Uh, it's easy to understand. All right. Any questions on the demo? Were you guys able to capture it up or? It's just with uh, simple click, you go to the application insights and then configure application insight, and you can see the uh, app insights key generated. Once you publish, uh, you should be able to see the telemetry is going to the app insights on Asia and the asset in local. Uh, let me quickly go back to the previous one. I will show how to run it in local so that you can always go home and uh, run it in local. So I am going to run this application. So you, here you can see I have created a logger factory and at the application side, I'm going to pass the logger information. So this is going to write all the logs that I have been added. And if you go to one of the controllers, which is going to have the home page, about page, and the contact page. So I have added a logger saying that someone from Asia Bootcamp has accessed this page. So let me see the application right now. So this application that we have, now whenever I navigate to a boot page, it is going to write, write it saying someone from this bootcamp has access to this page. So you can always check your application insights from here. You can right click on it and if you don't see it, you can see the application insight. Once I click it, you will see the telemetry is coming from your application. Uh, so you can always filter from here and based on the exception, you can filter from here and these are the Locks generated by default and the trace I have added. So if you see the trace I added, 
to go back, click the whole page. If anyone sees someone, then you can just let me know. Let me disable all the other things. I'm going to log only the traces. So there are 77 traces. You can select the filters. I was clicking the home page. So this is going to write it here a pin size. Now you should be able to see. Yeah, you can see the request, uh, the log information that we are logged in. <laughs> Similarly, you can write custom telemetries as I shown earlier. Uh, you can log all the ex exception that is populated from the uh, dependencies as well. Let me quickly go to the Jupyter notebook, which is Asian notebook, and uh, let's see how we can integrate Asian notebook with Appin Uh So I am going to go to notebooks.asian.com. By default, it will show you the uh, default libraries that packages that you can play with, uh, so set of samples they have provided. And if you go to libraries, I have already created a particular this session for this session. Uh, I'm not going to write the code right now since we don't have much time. I'm going to the app insights session. This is already stopped. Uh, this is the thing that I mentioned. It is going to run a separate kernel for your each notebook, and you can import files from. And you can always share the code with others as well. Let me go back. Let's start up. Go to my libraries. Uh, all these are stopped. Let me run it again. Yeah. So what I have done is I have created a Jupyter uh, notebook extension that is going to get your application inside queries and you can pass the queries to this particular method and it will produce the JSON so you can visualize the JSON in any format. Uh, it is a bit of simple code you can easily uh, identify. It is going to return the pattern here and get the AMetric a data going to return the data that gets from the application inside. Uh, this is particular method going to sort the access so that we can easily plot it from graph. Uh, let me go back to the Jupyter notebook. First, I will show the uh, insights from the IPL matches CSV that I have. For all the IPL matches that happened between the last 10 years, I have it in Jupyter uh, demo. You can see the information in tablet format. It has all the matches that happened and what is the which team has won and what is the margin and wickets so forth. Let me do a quick analysis on that. So I will go to Jupyter.org. This is a notebook that I have created. This is Asia Bootcamp 2018 demo. It's going to take some time to load. So by default, it uh, comes with a lot of libraries, Asia notebooks. You don't have to install anything. But if you are missing any libraries, you can run this command and uh, install it. It is going to say it's already matches the requirement, so it's already satisfied. I'm going to give the matches CSV, so I'm uh, assigning a file path uh, named matches, and I'm using one of the pandas libraries, I mean one of the package named pandas, so to read the input out operations. Though also using matplot library to generate some visualization, also Seabone, which is going to give some advanced analytics that you can see. And I'm going to configure the output size to this particular size, which is going to generate the uh, dark grid. Yeah. 
So when you run this particular matches dot shape, it is going to give the information about your data set that you have. So I have 636 rows and 18 columns. And when you run match, matches dot head, it is going to display the information in tabular format. And when you run the describe command, it could be any data source uh, which is going to display in this particular format. So which is going to again display uh, the data inform uh, the information that you have on Sprite the spreadsheet, what type of field you have and what type of information. And when I type matches dot info, it is going to display the columns and uh, what is the data type. Uh, when I say unique, it is going to display. Uh, I am taking the column season and how many seasons that have happened. So we have totally uh, nine seasons until now. It's there since I didn't take the last year, this year data, so it's going to be nine. And I am going to analyze one of the important uh, factor, uh, which team has won by largest or the smallest margin here. So it is going to be Mumbai Indians again, rising food super giants. It's last year. So I am uh, getting the run uh, difference greater than or equal to one, and I am going to run this query by this field. So which is going to execute and see this. Yep. And this also you can always generate a graph using that. I'm going to do that. And uh, now I'm going to generate a box plot to uh, create more kind of advanced visualization. Yeah, uh, to see the visualization in more. Here, if you see, uh, this is the command that I'm passing, box plot and the fields, uh, which is going to generate a horizontal data graph. Uh, you can see it's always Rajasthan Royals who have been leading by most of the runs. So this is how you can do the analysis on Jupyter. Let me quickly go to the uh, application insights integration. So here I have imported the uh, necessary libraries. I have uh, installed using Jupyter Notebook uh, application inside Jupyter, which is going to install the SDK for application insights. So here I am generating a graph for uh, the number of requests that is coming to your application uh, using this particular uh, query. Here you need to pass your application ID and the corresponding key that is that you can generate from here. If you go to API keys, you can see the API access. You can, if you want to create a new key, you can generate it from here. So I am going to pass a key. I am not going to generate it here. So I am going to pass a key to Jupyter Notebook and generate the output. Which is going to create a box plot with x axis is going to be the number of requests and y axis is going to be the date. Let me quickly run. If it's going an error. Yes, uh, it's still building the macro library to build the application. Okay, since we are running out of time, you can go home. I have attached this uh, uh, source code in the GitHub. So you can go to this and you can see the three demos that I have demonstrated. Uh, this is the particular code that we were executing last week. You can integrate with application insights and see. So as I mentioned earlier, we will go back to the slides. Uh, this is the time to ask questions. If you have any questions, you can ask. Take offline. Okay. Yeah. So I have one question to ask. Uh, 